The Grand Canyon has long been a geological wonder, with its towering cliffs and ancient rock formations drawing millions of visitors every year. But recent scientific findings have revealed a startling discovery that has left experts scratching their heads. It appears that over a billion years worth of rocks are missing from the canyon, with rocks dating back 1.4 to 1.8 billion years suddenly jumping forward in time to be next to rocks dating back just 520 million years. What could have caused this bizarre phenomenon and what secrets might be buried deep within the Grand Canyon? Join us as we delve into the spooky facts of this Grand Canyon discovery and unravel the mysteries that have the internet on edge. Number 1. New Scorpion-Like Creatures In recent times, visitors to Grand Canyon National Park have been treated to an abundance of breathtaking vistas to take in. The Grand Canyon was shrouded in a thick blanket of fog because of an unusual weather pattern that occurred there a week ago, and just a few days ago, researchers found two new kinds of scorpion-like life forms in the canyon. The creatures, which are two species that had not been found before, have been given the name Pseudoscorpions by aficionados. They were found for the first time between 2005 and 2007, and at the time, people thought that there was nothing exceptional about them. However, a recent rediscovery has opened the door for discussion over the cave in which these two similar species were found. The new Pseudoscorpions attach themselves to larger animals for the purpose of transportation. This symbiotic partnership with larger organisms enables the species to proliferate and flourish in regions that would otherwise be inaccessible to them. In exchange, the organisms consume annoying insects such as ticks, mites, fleas, and other parasites while they're on their voyage. The cave in which these new species were found is quite small, yet it is home to an astonishing number of different kinds of animals. Within the cave itself is one of the largest cricket roosts in all of northern Arizona, and it also contains the widest variety of cave-adapted arthropods of any cave in the entire Grand Canyon. Hesperoschernes brady Bogni and Tuberoschernes Kohni are the names given to the newly discovered species. These names were chosen in honor of cave exploration supporter Jeff Bradybaugh and entomologist Theodore Cohn. Number 2 Ancient Reptiles What exactly did Alan Krill discover while he was exploring the Grand Canyon? Alan Krill came across a pebble with a pattern that resembled footprints. He snapped several photographs and then emailed them to Stephen Rowland, who examined them and determined that the objects in question were the fossilized remains of once living organisms. Roland had theorized that the fossil track could be 313 million years old and could have originated from an amniot, which is an animal that lays eggs with hard shells. Amniots are known to have existed approximately 313 million years ago. The separation of the footprint from the mana catcher allowed it to remain in relatively excellent condition. The age of the footprints, which were found on a rock, was determined to be 330 million years old after researchers observed two separate imprints. Roland spotted two different species of reptiles moving diagonally across the field. In addition to this, he observed that one of the reptiles was roughly a foot long and moved in a manner that is referred to as lateral sequence. This is a highly significant finding because it demonstrates that the lateral sequence gait was utilized way back when vertebrates were just getting their start in the animal kingdom. The research that Roland did on the footprints may have been met with some opposition. Number 3. Chester Sloth in Colorado Canyon the Chester ground sloth, which weighed in at 500 pounds and had been extinct for more than 10,000 years, was discovered to have inhabited a rampart cave in the canyon by a team of researchers. Radiocarbon dating was used to analyze the feces, which revealed both the diet of the animal and the types of plants that were native to the area. Number 4. Mogollon Monster A mysterious creature is known as the Mogollon Monster and it's been reported in the area surrounding the Grand Canyon. The first sighting of the Mogollon monster was made in 1903 by a man named I. W. Stevens. He described the creature as having a long white beard and white hair on its head. It is stated that the monster stands seven feet tall, has hair that can be either black or reddish, and does not have a face, chest, feet, or hands. According to other reports, it has enormous feet that leave footprints that are roughly 22 inches long, and it has a putrid odor. The majority of campers and hikers in the region said that the Mogollon monster would visit their campsites at night and take care of any problems that arose on its own. There have been reports of individuals hearing extended whistles and knocking sounds coming from the woods. Number 5. Colorado River People are conducting research into the past of the Grand Canyon as a result of a recent discovery. 
The Colorado River is on the verge of drying up, and the Grand Canyon condors once fed on creatures that are no longer around to provide food for them. This could have led to the bird's extinction. The Colorado River begins its journey in the Rocky Mountains and goes through canyons, deserts, and waterfalls on its route to the Grand Canyon. After passing through the Grand Canyon, the Colorado River eventually empties into the Gulf of California. Researchers have discovered that if specific measures are not implemented, the river will run dry in a relatively short amount of time. The construction of dams and changes in the Colorado River's course are two human activities that environmentalists believe have degraded the river's quality of life. The flow of the river through the Grand Canyon is as strong as ever, although the current water level is far lower than it was in the past. Environmentalists believe that dams and the redirection of rivers are the primary causes of this, which is why individuals who are interested in going whitewater rafting in the Grand Canyon should do so as soon as possible. Number 6. Uranium Mining in the Grand Canyon The Grand Canyon indeed contains uranium, but the level of radiation is quite minimal, thus it is perfectly safe for anyone to go there. However, there are abandoned mines in the Grand Canyon that present a risk to the people who choose to make their homes there. When the uranium rush began again, people headed back to the Grand Canyon region to begin mining once more. However, for the previous 20 years, uranium mining had been prohibited on one million acres of land surrounding the Grand Canyon. Number 7. The Ruins Museum in Tucson displays artifacts from a town that dates back 12,000 years in Arizona. The Tucson ruins may be at a distance of three miles to the west of Desert View Point, which is the location of the Grand Canyon's most eastern entrance. The museum and the ruins themselves are the two components that make up the whole. Visitors can gain a deeper understanding of the historical site by perusing the various displays that are located close to the ruins of the old village. More than 12,000 years have passed since people first settled in the area that is now known as the Grand Canyon, and the archaeological work housed in the Tucson Ruins Museum is the most comprehensive of its kind in the region. Number 8. Grand Canyons Havasupai people were removed from their land against their will. People who have lived in the area, now known as the Havasupai tribe, have called the Grand Canyon home for a very long time. They inhabit a broad region that may be found into the east of the Bill Williams Mountain Range and down to the tiny Colorado River. On the Colorado Plateau, to the east of the Moen Kopi Wash, and quite a distance from the Grand Canyon, was where the Supai people lived. They did not meet any European explorers until the late 1800s when they arrived at the canyon and followed the road formed by the Hopi, Havasupai, and ancient Puebloans. Before that time, they were the only people in the area. The Havasupai were relocated to a reservation in Havasu Canyon that included a total area of 518 acres after being ordered to leave by the National Park Service. In 1975, the federal government granted the Supai tribe ownership of 185,000 acres of land within the canyon as well as along the rim of the canyon. The members of the tribe today make their living through farming, tourism, and paid jobs. Number 9. Artifacts Found in Grand Canyon Pottery, jewelry, stone tools, seeds, fireplace ash, and even a buffalo bone, presumably traded from somewhere else, have all been found at the sites. Excavations were conducted at numerous houses and nearby trash midden sites, and one kiva, likely utilized for ritual purposes, was found. Even though the project found evidence of human habitation in the Grand Canyon, dating from Paleo-Indian nomadic hunter-gatherers up to historic Southwest Native cultures, the majority of the discoveries came from 250 years between 1000 and 1250 AD, when ancestral Puebloan people lived and farmed along the Colorado River. Do you believe that the Grand Canyon National Park is doing enough to protect the wildlife so that additional new species can be discovered? If so, what are some of the things that the park is doing? Share your thoughts with us in the section provided below. That's it for today. We'll be right back soon, so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel.